Bobo Joe, Brock Lesnar. It's happening at Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire. Oh, God, man. For the WWE Universal Championship. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm a little bit geeked. Frankly, it's one of those examples of the WWE doing just enough to suck me in and keep me coming back. Because I'm really excited about the potential and the possibility of what could be here. Uh, it's disappointing for me to see the rumors talk about this is just going to be a one-off or Lesnar goes over because if that's going to be the case, then why bother doing it? Um, I know this company's all giggly tits about the build-up to Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34, whatever. Uh, but the truth is, is, there's a real crossroads here with Brock. His contract expires after WrestleMania 34. You really only have a certain number of viable opponents realistically left for him anyways. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns. So we might be looking at the tail end, potentially, of Brock Lesnar's uh, run in WWE just because after WrestleMania 34, he might not serve much of a purpose. So I could, in theory, understand why the WWE would want to throw out as many potential opponents for Brock as they possibly could. We want to throw Joe at him, then we want to throw Strowman at him. We want to shut some people up, throw Finn Balor at him. Eventually we'll get to where the WWE wants to go, which is Reigns versus Lesnar at 34. If you're only going to have a certain number of dates, you might as well maximize the dates, and I understand that. But to me, if the WWE made this a one-off between Joe and Lesnar, I think they're making a huge mistake. Just because you can have Brock Lesnar face multiple people doesn't mean you should. Doesn't mean you should at all. And in fact, I think the WWE would really be selling themselves short on a story that could make them some real money. And I know I used to do a lot of booking videos in the past. It's been a long time since I've done one. So with my interest being high in this particular story, I thought it was only right to come back and do a booking video and talk about how WWE should book Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar. And let me kind of explain what I'm looking to accomplish here. I'm trying to cement Joe as a top guy. Um, you know, just because we want to view him as a top guy, we want to think of him as a top guy, doesn't mean he's a top guy. We want to cement him as a top guy. I want to create a serious, legitimate opponent for Lesnar. Because if Lesnar does resign with WWE and he's around a couple more years, I might need to potentially come back to Samoa Joe as opponent for him because of so many years of... Uh, criminally um, ruining guys' momentum and burying guys and not knowing how to build stars. There just aren't many viable opponents left in the land of misfit and munchkin toys of the WWE. So you got to do everything you can to make Joe that type of guy because you might need to come back to it someday. I'm trying to give the WWE a really hot story for the summer that could carry them into the NFL season. I'm trying to make the road to uh, Reigns and Lesnar in their inevitable WrestleMania 34 showdown as tolerable as possible. Um, I'm trying to do a lot of things. I'm also trying not to sabotage Brock Lesnar because with uh, stuff you already did with Goldberg, you just can't have him lose to a bunch of people on the way to losing it to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 34 because like Reigns or not, if you're going to go there, and especially if Brock is going to be leaving the company, it doesn't carry nearly the amount of impact if Brock Lesnar has lost three, four, five times in a 12-month stretch heading into his match against Roman, it's not special. It's not nearly the big deal that it should be. So there's all these things I'm trying to think about. But here we go. How WWE should book Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar, in my opinion. We should have fun with this. Here's what we know so far. Samoa Joe won the Fatal Five-Way at Extreme Rules. He's the number one contender to the WWE Universal title. He's slated to face Brock Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire. We know this past Monday on Raw, he choked out Paul Heyman in that epically awesome segment. We also know that Brock is announced for next week's Raw. We know what shows he's announced for on the road to Great Balls of Fire. So it gives us some good parameters for how to really kick this feud off and get us to Great Balls of Fire and ultimately beyond. I'm going to start with next week's Raw first, though. And my thought is this. Fuck the pre-production. Fuck the intro. Fuck the video packages. You have Raw come straight on the air at 8 p.m. Eastern, and you already see Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar fighting backstage. And they're going at it. They're going at it at one point in time. You get some of the securities able to pull them apart a little bit, and Joe yells out to... Brock Lesnar, that by the time I'm done with you, you're going to wish you were working at Jimmy John's, bitch. And Brock Lesnar kind of laughs, and he's kind of whisked away. 
after all this, we go to commercial. So that's the first thing we see, and then we take a break. And then when we come back, guess what we come back to? These two guys find each other, and they're fucking fighting again. You can do this, you can do this, you can break them apart, and you tell them to leave the building, both of them, and then you go back into your regular show at this point in time. Who gives a shit? But we could say that about Raw every week anyways. But, but, but we're not done. Later on, all of a sudden we're in the middle of a match. It doesn't matter who it is at this point. It's irrelevant. And all of a sudden we see Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar fucking duking it out, fighting each other, coming from the backstage area down the ramp. They eventually get to the commentary table. They ultimately go fighting all throughout the fucking crowd. The fight en eventually ends up down in the ring area. Security comes out to freaking break them apart, and this time it doesn't work. Security gets thrown all over the place. Um, Joe and Lesnar keep going at it. One or both of them, and I would prefer both of them, gets bloody the hard way. If we're going to do it, we want to get nuts, and we want to sell this like a big-time, physical, legit, no-bullshit shoot fight, then that's what the fuck we need to do. I usually don't advocate busting open the hard way, but if that's what it takes to get the point across in this particular case, not in any extreme, we need 20 stitches on the top of our head type of way, but busting a mouth, busting the nose, something like that. Eventually, you get Kurt Angle comes out, and he's waving for the roster to come out, and eventually the roster is able to separate them, and that's what we see from them, and they're gone for the night. So you weave this in all throughout the show. And I know they've done this at different times, but not to the level and the extreme that I'm talking about here. You're talking about no video package, no intro. You jump right in. Fuck that shit. You go to commercial break. You come back. Bam, they're back at it again. Fuck that shit. Because why would Brock Lesnar, when his advocate, his best friend in life, his business partner, Paul Heyman, has gotten fucked up like that, why would he wait to be introduced why would he want to walk down the ramp? Why would he want to talk to somebody like a Samoa Joe? He wants revenge and he wants to beat the holy hell shit out of him. And Samoa Joe doesn't want to talk. He wants to beat the holy hell shit out of Brock Lesnar too. So it's one of these things. Sometimes the best way to go is to not have him touch for as long as you can. Sometimes the best way is to fuck it. You dive right into it. And to me, that's the way you do it. So you follow up the next week on Raw, and throughout the course of the night, you're just running video packages and reminders of what happened, because again, the rest of Raw, frankly, doesn't fucking matter. Eventually, we do get to Samoa Joe coming out. This time, he is ready to talk, and his whole promo was about Brock the bitch, and you just let the dude go out there and talk about how much he resents Brock and where he's at that he thinks he's better than Brock, he wants that spot, he's going to take that spot at Great Balls of Fire, Heyman interrupts, he's on the freaking Titan Tron, he says that Brock's going to be back next week, and Samoa Joe says something to the effect of, well, Paul, you better tell your bitch to bring his bitch ass here, because I'm going to fuck him up, and I'm talking about using profanity to where you better pray you have a seven second delay. So now we come back to the next week, June 26th, that at Raw, this time you've got the Heyman and Lesnar promo segment. Now I know you're kind of like, why are we going so balls in right after this shit with uh, Heyman getting choked out by Joe and then we're following up with two weeks of promo packages. I've teased it hot early. Now I do need to cool it a little bit. I need to add some layers to the story. I need to not blow my fucking wad because again, if I was just only trying to book two great balls of fire and that's it, yeah, I'd be crazy shit, crash TV all fucking day, every week on Raw. This shit would spill over to SmackDown, frankly. That's how much I would try to invest in this. But I'm trying to slow play this for the long term. So I'm giving the people a little bit to let them know the potential, the possibility. Now we got to come back down to earth just a little bit. But even then, you get the Heyman and Lesnar promo segment. You know, and it's let Paul Heyman again. I'm not scripting this shit. Let Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar go out there and do what Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar do, in particular Paul Heyman. Maybe we come up with a talking, couple talking points. Maybe we fucking don't. Doesn't really matter. Joe comes out and interrupts and says that Brock's title in his spot, his manager, is all going to be fucking his after Great Balls of Fire. And then Brock grabs the mic from Heyman at the end. The one thing I want Brock to get across is that he looks at Joe and he says, Joe, after WWE Great Balls of Fire, 
you're going to wish you had taken your fat ass and stayed in the bush leagues of wrestling. Because I'm the beast incarnate, the conqueror of Brock Lesnar. Bam! And we don't do anything else. We just let it be. That's how you end that week's Raw. Now we come to the pre-holiday version, the July 3rd Raw. And all I'm doing are sit-down, shoot-feel type of interviews. I want Samoa Joe to come across as a badass with a villainous streak. Who do I get to interview him to make it feel like big leagues, to make him feel like a big league type of guy, to make this issue feel like a big deal? It's got to be Jim Ross. Good old JR can do the interview in the way that I'm looking in order to get Samoa Joe even more over in the way that I'm trying to get him over. Because you're not going to bring in JR at this point in time and waste him on bullshit. You're just not. So when you bring him in and do something with him on TV with somebody that instantly elevates the profile of that person, that's what he would do with Samoa Joe. And Brock Lesnar, I would go in a different direction, have Paul Heyman interview him, but the whole interview is nothing more than Brock Lesnar feeding a question to Paul Heyman for Paul Heyman to ask Brock Lesnar for Brock Lesnar to fucking answer. What's the content of it? Again, why would I script all this shit out? Let the talent figure it out. Maybe we come up with a couple of talking points. That's not what's important. My point is, after all that hubbub of the June 12th Raw and some of these other things that we've done, you know, we've even worked in three straight weeks of talking and promos and all of that. Now we do get to the point, though, where we have really built this thing up to big a big motherfucking deal. So now we get to great balls of fire. But what do you do? You're starting to build up a monster here between Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. You want to give the people a taste, but you don't want to blow your freaking dude here, if you get what I'm saying. Just enough to wet the whistle, you know, kind of like a woman's dress should be. Long enough to cover the subject, short enough to keep it interesting. And the best way to do that in this particular case, and sometimes I'm an advocate of this, there's no question, but part of the reason is, is that when done right, this shit really, really works. It's great if you can have a match. You can sit there and go through all the rigmarole of doing a fight, doing a match, and then having to figure out how to book the finish. But if you don't have to box yourself into that type of position, why go there? I'm not having to finish this match because I'm not having this match ever start. These guys, just like before, just like with Raw almost a month before, they're fighting fucking backstage when it's time for their fight. Like, we're even at the point where we're showing the video packages to hype this shit up and we cut away because we hear there's a commotion backstage and these two dudes are fucking going at it. Again, these guys hate each other that much. Why in the bluest of blue fucks at this moment would they wait through the video packages? Why the hell would they wait through the introductions? Why would they want to walk down the ramp and listen to a referee? These two guys are out for blood and they're coming after each other. They're out in the back fighting. They go all throughout the backstage area fucking fighting. You take out some random people as collateral fucking damage. Maybe some of the wrestlers too. You do all types of crazy fucking shit. You come out. You're fighting through the goddamn crowd again. You're getting ringside again. You're still fucking fighting. I mean, you use weapons. You use every goddamn thing at your fucking disposal. Get into the ring. You fight some more. Here comes security. Again, that shit's not going to work. They fucking obliterate the security. Then you send out the freaking roster. The roster comes out, and this time, the roster can't even hold these guys back. They're fucking laying waste to the damn roster because they want to get their hands on each other so damn bad they haven't had enough yet. They're trying to establish who's the alpha male, who's the top dog, who is the big guy in WWE, and eventually get to the point where maybe the entirety of this happening is somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes. You have the pay-per-view go dark with these two guys fighting through the roster and fighting each other. Again, if you don't need to have a match, don't. If you don't need to box yourself into a corner where you have to come up with some type of match finish, don't. And for what I'm trying to do and how long I'm trying to advance the story between the two of them, this is frankly the only option that I have. And just think about the optics of how great this would look to have a Samoa Joe and a Brock Lesnar want to kill each other so damn bad that they don't care about the rules. They don't even care about the damn match. They don't care about the title. They only care about getting their hands on each other and beating the holy shit out of each other. And that's just step one of this program. We've still got 
several more months to go. So Great Balls of Fire is in the books, and we know we're building up to something even bigger come SummerSlam, and that's exactly what we're doing. So how do you follow that up on that July 10th episode of Raw? Very simple to me. You kick off the show with the only story that matters, and that is Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe. And in this particular case, you have Brock come out to start the night. No Paul Heyman, no big major theatrics. I wouldn't even want any freaking entrance music. Just Brock Lesnar walking down the damn ramp, acting like he's got a purpose that we've never seen before. Grabs a mic, short, sweet, to the point. Something about how Samoa Joe's taking this shit to a whole different level, and he's the conqueror, and he wants to take him to Suplex City, and he wants to take him to Suplex City tonight. And he throws down the gauntlet that if Samoa Joe is man enough, because he knows he's back there, if he wants Brock Lesnar so damn bad, and he wants this title so damn bad, then he better come get it, bitch, because it's on the line tonight. So Joe comes out, and of course... He's got the mic, and he's ready to fucking go, and he agrees. It's him. It's Lesnar. It's the title. It's tonight, and in fact, fuck it. It's going to be right now until, unfortunately, Kurt Angle comes out and says, no, 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 we, we're not ready for this. We're not prepared for this. You guys can't be trusted. We can't control you. We can't stop you. You guys have gone too far, and that's enough. Lesnar, if you want to fight tonight... I'm going to strip you of your title. Joe, if you want to fight tonight, you're going to lose your title shot. and You're going to lose your degree match with Brock Lesnar. If you guys want to fight, we're going to do this right, and we're going to do it in Brooklyn at SummerSlam. So you either do it now, and you lose your title, Lesnar, you lose your uh, title shot, Joe, you lose your shot at Lesnar, or you wait until SummerSlam and we do the damn thing. And Angle tells them they have two choices. They can either stay and be suspended indefinitely, or they can leave the arena now and live to fight another day at SummerSlam. Which they look at it, each other, they look at Angle, they look at each other, they look at Angle, and they look like they really want to do it. And Angle says, again, I'm serious. Lesnar, you do this. I'm stripping your title right now. Joe, you do this. You don't get Lesnar at SummerSlam. You don't get a title shot. And you're both suspended indefinitely, and I mean it. And eventually they stop. And you see pick, you see video later, a little bit later, after the commercial break of both of them leaving the damn uh, show. And that's it. You'll show video packages of it throughout the night. You'll recap what happened to Great Balls of Fire. You'll recap what's happened in the buildup so far. But that's, that's all we need to do. We don't need to do anything else at this point because we've still got over a month before we get to SummerSlam. So how do we follow up after this? Well, this is where I kind of go in a different direction. Some of you are going to think that I jumped the shark. Some of you are going to think I'm insane. And you're probably right. I want to make this feel as organic as possible. I want to make this feel as real as possible. So what I'm going to do Tuesday afternoon is I'm going to start leaking to the press, to the internet, to the dirt sheet, that Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar met up at a bar Monday night and they got into a physical altercation. Like, I, I'm WWE. I know who the leakers are. I know who the people that sell the information in the dirt sheets are. You really do. And you can pretty much assume everybody. And you tell them, pull together in a meeting, you tell everybody, this is what happened. This is no bullshit. This is real deal. These guys don't fucking like each other. They got into a damn bar fight. And we don't know what the hell's going to happen. Have Meltzer, his mark ass, he buy into this bullshit. Have all these people buy into this bullshit. And sell this story all week. And talk about how it's going to be addressed next week on Raw. Now you've made Raw destination programming. If you say, well, nobody's going to be stupid enough to buy that shit. The majority of wrestling fans still think that the Montreal screw job was 100% above board to shoot. 20 years later, give me a goddamn break. Wrestling fans believe work crap is shoot all the damn time. They absolutely do. Like, there are still people that probably think six years later that CM Punk actually left the WWE. They think that CM Punk actually was given the title without a contract. Are you fucking insane? The point is, if you sell it well enough, the wrestling fan sometimes is not, as a community, is not 
sophisticated enough to discern the fact from the fiction, the shoot from the work. Fucking why not go with it? Because even if people think it's a work, if you do the work well, it doesn't fucking matter. So we get to Raw, and we have the commentators address the fact that there was an incident that happened last Monday night after Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar left Raw at a local bar in the city where Raw was. And we're going to show what happened here in a moment. Uh, you give the warning that it's disturbing and everything else. It's this pre-recorded bar fight scene. You're using black and white security footage with no sound. You don't need the sound because the point will fucking get across. You'll have Samoa Joe sitting down, bellied up to the bar. Three dudes come around him, you know, like one flanking him each side, one behind him. Joe kind of turns around. And you can tell they're talking shit to him. We don't need to hear the words because we can get the point. And eventually... This happens, and Joe just fucking destroys the three of them. Just completely destroys the three of them. Because what you're also trying to do is sell the fact that your wrestlers are badass. That your wrestlers are not to be trifled with, not to be fucked with. So what better way to do that than to incorporate that into the story? And after he fucks up these three people, you have the security footage showing a guy kind of laughing in the background. And you realize it's Brock Lesnar. Samoa Joe spots Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's smile goes from <laughs> to oh my god. And here comes Samoa Joe. He's grabbing a fucking pool stick and he's going after Brock Lesnar. People try to break him up. They're smashing people's faces. They're smashing up the fucking bar. They can't fucking stop going at each other and at everybody else. Eventually it spills off and we lose them on the security camera footage. And that's it. That's it. This whole one big bar fight scene. That's it. That's all I would do. I'd maybe replay it later on on Raw to catch up to people that didn't watch the first hour of the show, what the hell happened, and then I'd move on to next week. So we're July 24th Raw. I'm going to do split shots or you know different segments, one showing Samoa Joe arriving at the arena, the other one showing uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar arriving at the arena. So I'm waiting until, and this is going to be well into the show, well into the show, because it's going to kind of feed into what I'm doing. So eventually we get to the main event, Lesnar's music hits, out comes Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, and we're getting ready to have one of those pipe bomb, Paul Heyman, Jew bomb uh, promo segments. So they start talking about what happened at the bar. You know, they try to sell the fact that uh, Samoa Joe was the aggressor. Brock was just looking to have a good time. You know, in no way did he send those three guys at Samoa Joe to try and fuck with him or anything else, which he did. Uh, but he tries to sell the fact that he didn't. And he said, they're ready to kind of try to call a truce until SummerSlam if Samoa Joe is going to come out. So they, they did get nothing out of Samoa Joe. So then Brock Lesnar starts talking shit about Samoa Joe's talk, dogging him and dogging him, talking about he's bushly, talking about he's this. Talk about he can't wait until SummerSlam because he'd rip his head off. And if he was here right now, he'd rip his head off too. And eventually the camera shows Samoa Joe watching the television screen backstage. Joe's had enough. He's walking and he's going to come out and he's going to do something about it. But we get to the gorilla position and the cops stop him. And ultimately Samoa Joe is arrested for what happens at the bar. And we try to sell this, leak this to the press. We try to sell this like it's a whole big story and everything. But while Samoa Joe is getting arrested, you're showing this on the Titan Tron, and then you show Lesnar and Heyman watching this, and they're laughing about it. And they think this shit is funny. And they're mocking Joe as he's getting handcuffed and hauled away. All the while, here come the cops from behind in the crowd. They come out, and they sneak up on Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, and Brock and Heyman turn around and realize what happens. The cops, about eight or nine of them, encircle Brock Lesnar. They've got their hands on their frickin' tasers. They've got their hands. A couple of them have their nightsticks out. A couple of them have their fucking guns out. You want to sell that Brock Lesnar could potentially fuck all of these cops up, or something bad could potentially happen if he doesn't go peacefully. So ultimately, Heyman's trying to quell the situation. He's trying to stop it, but he realizes it's going to happen, so he's trying to calm down Brock Lesnar, and eventually Brock is handcuffed too. So now, following this bar fight, we've got both of these guys getting arrested, which is going to lead to some Schleg Daddy special shit 
the next week on Raw, July 31st. And the good thing about some of the things I'm doing here, I'm figuring out a way to maximize the usage of Brock Lesnar with requiring very few actual physical dates out of him. July 31st, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a pre-recorded jail yard fight segment with these fucking two. I'm dead serious, using more security cam footage. Like you got Brock Lesnar working out or something and Samoa Joe comes out of, onto the yard and he sees Brock Lesnar working out. Brock spots him, Joe spots him, and is fucking on and popping. You got your other wrestlers acting like the freaking inmates. I don't know how you can figure that shit out, uh, but you show that to give an update on what's happening with these guys. And later on in the night, you get a segment where the WWE cameras are with as Paul Heyman goes to speak with Brock Lesnar. And, you know, this is not one of these things where it's like the uh, their face-to-face -face interaction where they can touch each other. This is the, you know, the old movie shit where you're behind the fucking glass and you got to use the telephone to talk to each other. Later on in the night, you have Kurt Angle come and do the same damn thing with Samoa Joe. You know, what are they going to talk about, frankly, at this point in time? Who gives a shit? We'll figure it out when we get close to that moment. And that's how we end that week's Raw. So now we get to March 7th, the 2017 um, episode of Raw. Angle is comes out, kicks off the show, and he's talking about what what's happened, uh, what we're looking at here. Paul Heyman then comes out and interrupts and announces that he was able to get his kind of people, to borrow from his words, uh, to get Brock's charges dropped, and here comes Brock Lesnar out. Triple H then comes out. He can tie into this. And he announces that WWE's legal team was able to get the charges dropped against Samoa Joe. And these are charges for disturbing the peace and disorderly conduct and uh, destruction of property and assault and battery and all this crap. And then you have Joe comes out and Triple H orders both of them to stand down or they're going to be fired, period, because this has gone far too long. We got both of the we got all the charges dropped against both of you. You guys are gonna settle this, you're gonna settle it our way, and you're gonna do it at SummerSlam. And Angles announces next week that there's going to be a press conference and a contract signing, and it's gonna happen live on Raw. And Triple H says, No, we're gonna take this a step further. We're gonna take this and make this a big deal. Next week, this press conference. Before SummerSlam, the go-home show of Raw, the press conference is going to be live, and it's going to be in Times Square. And he throws down the gauntlet that if you guys touch each other or hurt each other in any way, there's going to be no match, and you guys are both fired. So now, we've done all this whole big storyline arc bullshit from Great Balls of Fire where these two guys didn't even have an actual official match to where they've gotten into a bar fight, they've gotten thrown in jail, we've used legal teams to get them out, to now we've gotten to a point where we built so much interest into this that we could justify legitimately having a press conference contract signing for this match in freaking Times Square. So you're going to be in Brooklyn for SummerSlam, it makes sense to be in the New York area for Raw. It makes sense to have this freaking press conference in Times Square. You want to make this a spectacle. You want people to take notice and say, what the fuck is going on here? You want ESPN and all these other media news outlets to really latch onto this and sell this thing like this is wrestling the way we know wrestling. This is the way wrestling's supposed to be. And then when we get to that August 14th episode of Raw, you get to the very end of the show. And here's the live Times Square press conference. Not 30, 40 minutes of spectacle and a bunch of bullshit. You've got Samoa Joe there, Triple H there. You've got Brock Lesnar there. You've got Paul Heyman there. You've got Kurt Angle there. You've got, you know, all these big time names in WWE. They're there. You've got all types of media freaking there. Real and imagined doesn't matter. Um, we're working this, though, like Hogan Andre. You know, Hogan Warrior, those real type of serious contract signings and press conferences. We're trying to sell this as legit as we possibly can and skipping the bullshit because these guys aren't about the bullshit. These guys just want to fuck each other up at SummerSlam. And that's it. Man, can you imagine the optics of doing a press conference with these guys live on Raw in freaking Times Square on the go-home show 
before SummerSlam, I don't know about you, that had me pretty sold for the match to come that Sunday. Now we actually get to SummerSlam. And of course, Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal Championship is main eventing a the period. Imagine all the hype you can do within the show to build up to this match. Just think about the video packages alone. You can sprinkle them in throughout the fucking night. I would still do an interview with Joe. I would do an interview with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. I'm throwing everything at it because I want this SummerSlam main event to feel like a monster special attraction. SummerSlam main event. I'm still building that night to build to the crescendo of this moment. Now, this time the match actually does start. It actually becomes official. But it is just fucking balls to the wall brawling for 10 minutes. Nobody ever gets a clear fucking advantage. These guys keep going back and forth. Maybe somebody gets just a slight bit of an advantage and it's taken away. Slight bit of advantage and taken away because I'm trying to build these guys up to be as equal as possible. Not so much bringing Lesnar down a level. I'm trying to bring Joe up a freaking level and I think this is the match that really does it here. Eventually we get to the point where these guys just won't stop. They're not paying attention to the referee. They're not heeding any of the commands. They're not following any of the rules. Ultimately, the referee has to stop it because he ultimately cannot control it. This match maybe goes 10 minutes, and that's it. Both of these guys get pissed. They ultimately go after the fucking ref because they're so pissed. Brock Lesnar hits the ref with a freaking F5. Samoa Joe hits the ref with a muscle buster. I mean, we're going anarchy and chaos. Again, here comes security and the fucking roster. Kurt Angle, they're all coming out trying to stop this shit because this has gotten to the point of we can't have this anymore. And ultimately what happens is eventually Kurt Angle gets taken out by one of them or both of them. He tries to get in between them and they just keep going and angles left sprawled out on the ring apron where eventually the night ends and the pay-per-view goes dark with Lesnar suplexing both of them into a freaking table and they're both laid out. It's all types of pandemonium and chaos. Imagine that New York crowd seeing this shit and what they would do. They're not going to boo it. They're not going to shit on it. They're going to mark out and tweet about it like it's one of the most awesome things I've ever fucking seen. And they're going to want more, more, more. And now we got to get to the point to where we give them more, more, more after SummerSlam. So it's the night after SummerSlam. It's raw. We just had some really big shit go down on the show the night before. Both of these guys assaulted referees. They fucked up security again. They fucked up the roster again. The general manager of Raw got taken out. All of that. <clears throat> so what do we do? Well, we got to address it right away. And how do we address it in this particular case? We got to go as big as you can get. The music hits and it's Vince McMahon who opens the show. It's Vince McMahon who comes walking down to the ring and you can clearly tell he's not messing around with the BMF walk. He's fucking pissed. And you can see it in his face. He gets in there. He first thing he says, he tells everybody, <laughs> and that's it. Then he sits there and calls out Kurt Angle. He tells Kurt Angle, you got two minutes to get out here or you're fired. So here comes Kurt Angle and Vince gets him in the ring and he just blasts him and puts him on blast and says, how could you let this happen? How could you put the WWE in this type of position? This is on your watch. You're in charge and you let this happen. I'm giving you to the night. You either fix this or you're fired, and I'm going to fix it. You've got till the end of the night, so you can play this out throughout the whole night. You've got Paul Heyman coming to see Kurt Angle, and he's trying to sweet talk him. You know, and Angle just sits there and takes it and tells him, make sure he brings out Lesnar to the ring at the end of the night for his decision. Triple H finds Angle backstage, and now Triple H is trying to sweet talk him and talk about you know how he's the boss's son-in-law, the owner's son-in-law, tries to power play him a little bit. Angle tells Triple H, bring Samoa Joe out with you to the ring at the end of the night. Angle, at the end of the night, he's in the ring, he's got the mic, he calls on Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, they come out. He calls on Triple H and Samoa Joe, and they come out. Angle tells them to back off of each other, or there's going to be consequences. He demands that they shake hands and put an end to this. 
be the better men, be the real men, and stop it because enough is enough. And you get to that point where you think this is going to happen. You think you got to the point where the story is going to end. You think all of this. You've got Heyman. You've got let you know Triple H. So you've kind of got that look on him, like yeah, we need to we need to end this. You've got Angle, who's giving him that same type of look. Lesnar and Joe kind of look at each other, and they get ready to extend hands to each other. And then all of a sudden, we just start fucking wailing again. Triple H and Heyman try to stop, step in and stop it, but it fails. Lesnar accidentally gets thrown into Paul Heyman. Joe accidentally um, pushes Triple H into a fucking F5. Angle is able to cut out of the ring, and he tells both of them they're indefinitely suspended. He can't take this anymore. He's, they're lucky they're not fired, and they might be if they don't stop it right now. He informs Brock Lesnar. You're stripped of the title. He tells Samoa Joe, you've lost your title shot. You're not getting another chance at anybody right now until you get in control of yourself. And that's how we end the show. So now the night after SummerSlam, after this big whole hullabaloo, we spent the whole night building up to this moment. We've now accomplished what we wanted to accomplish in a unique and different way because of the fact that these guys can't stop fighting each other because of the fact that these guys have built up their heat to such a level we have now suspended both of them, and we have stripped Brock Lesnar of the WWE Universal title. So what does that mean? Well, let me tell you. So now what's WWE supposed to do? It's the night after SummerSlam. Uh, we had what happened at SummerSlam, and then on Raw, we had these guys. They couldn't be controlled. We ultimately suspended both of them indefinitely, and we stripped Lesnar of the title. Well, the next week on Raw, the August 28th edition, we got to figure out something, so we make it a big theme throughout the course of the night what we're going to do, and ultimately we get to the announcement towards the end of the night of Kurt Angle saying there's going to be a 16-man uh, tournament to determine a new Universal Champion for the Raw brand, uh, with them being crowned in the main event of the No Mercy pay-per-view on September 24th. So what this allows you to do is spend the next several weeks um, going through the tournament. On the September 4th edition, I'd have six qualifying matches. Then the next week on Raw, you begin the round of 16 matches. Then on the September 18th edition of Raw, you have four um, quarterfinal matches or whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah, the round of eight, whatever. Um, you have a couple of the guys... Uh, get taken out backstage and nobody sees it, nobody knows what happens. It's tying into uh, a couple of guys who were potentially suspended. And then ultimately we get to No Mercy and your main event is going to be for the title Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns. You've got Braun back by now. You're putting Roman in that title picture. And we get to this match and ultimately you can let these guys go. You know, they have some experience working with each other. Um... Just work it that way. And then at some point in time, out comes Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe comes out with a freaking chair or some type of baseball bat or some shit. And he yokes both of these fucking dudes up. Now, he does it quickly because he wants to get the fuck out of there. But he's made, he's, he's sent a message, he's made his point, and that's all there is to it. So, ultimately... The guys eventually recover, and Braun Strowman ends up beating Roman Reigns, and he has crowned the new WWE Universal Champion. Now, I could just sit there and have these two guys fight each other and have the match be clean and go over that way, but part of the reason I'm having a Joe get involved is because what I'm trying to do is set up future stories for down the road, and this is a way to kind of plant the seed and tie into, frankly, what I'm going to be doing the next night on Raw. Now, in terms of all the details of the actual 16-man championship tournament, I will try to put that in the description box for this video, so that way you guys can kind of follow along when I get to that point in the video of starting to talk about it. It will hopefully make more sense for you when you're able to see kind of how I broke it down. Now No Mercy's done. We've got a new WWE Universal Champion. What the hell do we do with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar? Well, here's what we do. The night after on Raw, the September 25th edition of Raw, we get Samoa Joe, comes out through the crowd, bogarts a mic from JoJo or whoever the fuck the ring announcer is going to be. It doesn't matter. And he comes out to start the show. He rolls into the ring, 
and he's threatening to lay waste the entire locker room if he doesn't get his way. He's going to hijack the show if anybody tries to stop him. What he wants is he wants to be reinstated. He demands a match with Brock Lesnar at Hell in a Cell inside of Hell in a Cell in the main event. Roman Reigns comes out because, of course, Roman Reigns is pissed off about what happened at No Mercy. Feels like he lost his chance to win the Universal title. So he's talking about how Samoa Joe thinks he's this big bad dude. Joe's going to kill you. Well, dog, I'm the big guy or whatever the hell you want to call him. I'm the guy. Uh, this is my yard. And I'll remove your little garden gnome ass if that's what it takes. And Samoa Joe's talking shit. Then Roman Reigns is like, no, you know what? Kurt Angle, get your ass out here now. And Angle eventually comes out and Roman Reigns says, look, this dude wants to be back. I want to beat his ass. The only way I can beat his ass is if you reinstate him. That's the only way this happens. So please reinstate him so I can kick him out of my yard once and for all tonight. Angle thinks about it, ponders it, and says, okay, you know what? Roman, you've got it, but here's the deal. It's an unsanctioned match, meaning there's no WWE people, there's no commentary, there's nothing. We cannot be responsible for what happens here. It's going to be a street fight. It's going to be you versus Samoa Joe. If Samoa Joe wins, his suspension is lifted. If Samoa Joe, if you lose, you're not only suspended, you're fired, and you can never work for WWE again. So Reigns, of course, is going to accept it, and Samoa Joe is like, I'll accept on one condition, and that is when I beat Roman Reigns tonight and I leave him laid out in his yard, you're not only going to lift my suspension, you're going to lift the suspension of Brock Lesnar because ultimately I want Brock Lesnar at Hell in a Cell inside of Hell in a Cell. That's all that matters to me. I'm obsessed with it and I'm consumed with it. So everybody agrees, and we've set up to the main event of the night. It's Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe in this unsanctioned street fight. And these two guys just beat the shit out of each other, and eventually what happens is Lesnar comes out through the crowd, and he interviews in the match. He starts fucking up Samoa Joe, and Roman Reigns just kind of looks at it, and he's laughing about it because he's like, hey, you know, this is helping me. I could potentially get Samoa Joe fired. I'm down with this. Eventually, though, Roman's kind of getting a little fed up with watching Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of this dude. So he goes after Brock Lesnar, who then, of course, Brock Lesnar is going to lay him the fuck out, starting to plant the seeds a little bit more for what could happen in the road to WrestleMania 34. He beats, he's beaten both of these fucking dudes. Lesnar's left him laying. So ultimately what happens, he drags Samoa Joe over, you know, all limp and shit, puts him on top of Roman Reigns, Fucking gets the count. One, two, three. Samoa Joe has won. Both of these guys are reinstated. And fucking Lesnar decides he's going to put him through another table via suplex to close out the damn show. And that's what you do. So now you figured out a way storyline-wise to bring both of these guys back in the fold. So the next week on Raw, the October 2nd edition, Samoa Joe's pissed off. He calls out Brock Lesnar. It's Paul Heyman, though, who answers, staying at the top of the ramp, talking about... How Samoa Joe has crossed the line. Samoa Joe has been an animal, the likes of which he hasn't seen, except for the conqueror, the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar. And that with all that Brock Lesnar's accomplished in his career, being an NCAA heavyweight champion, a UFC heavyweight champion, a multiple-time WWE and world heavyweight champion, with all the things this guy's accomplished, he's never seen a more driven, more focused, more motivated, more hungry angrier than he does right now because he wants nothing more than to bury Samoa Joe once and for all at Hell in a Cell. And Brock Lesnar is a man possessed and Samoa Joe, you better be a man possessed. Otherwise, it's going to be your worst fucking nightmare. And what happens is as Heyman is see doing this, Joe is sitting there kind of leaning over the ropes, hear it, listen to him talk, and all of a sudden, Lesnar tries to come up and sneak attack him, but what Lesnar doesn't know, and Heyman doesn't realize, is Joe has been expecting this, and he actually had some brass knucks on, so he turns around and cold cocks Brock Lesnar, and eventually he starts beating up on Lesnar, and he leaves Lesnar lame. So now we're getting back into a little more traditional stuff. Of One week, the face leaves the heel laying. The next week, the heel leaves the face laying, stuff like that. 
next week, October 9th edition of Raw. We get we get to the point where this has become such a monster, we got to give it the Undertaker WrestleMania match treatment, where we're interviewing current former superstars, Hall of Famers, people that have wrestled these guys before. You know, we're interviewing guys like um, AJ Styles and, you know, Anderson Gallows, all these people that would be familiar uh, with Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, and so on and so forth, Austin Aries, all these guys. We're interviewing all these people that have wrestled Brock Lesnar before. You know, you're doing all of this crap. You show multiple training video packages throughout the night of the training that Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar are doing, and that's all you have to do. We're only two weeks away from Hell in a Cell, and we got a fucking monster on our hands. So then we get to the October 16th edition of Raw. Kurt Angle announces at the beginning of the night that there's going to be a weigh-in tonight for these two guys, and he's going to make a big announcement for their Hell in a Cell match come Sunday. So we get to the end of the show. We have the weigh-in. Angle says at the start of the weigh-in that if these guys do touch each other, if they do touch each other, then the match is off and they're both fired. So it's a way to try and build the tension one last time. We've seen them touch each other enough. Um, we're, we're trying to save it now for the pay-per-view. We come out and, you know, we have the two guys do the weigh-in. They do the big stare down. And now Kurt Angle is pissed. He's got resentment towards both of these guys. And he drops one last bombshell on them. He says, you know what? I don't want to put any WWE official in harm's way. I don't want anybody to be potentially hurt really bad from having to referee this. So I'm going to be the guest referee for this Hell in a Cell match come Sunday. And that's the big mic drop, and we get to Hell in a Cell. Now we get to the big blow-off that is ultimately Hell in a Cell. This is where the feud ends. This is what we've been building to for the past four months, is this moment in time. Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar inside of Hell in a Cell, the main event of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, with Kurt Angle as a special guest referee. This match is just going to be a war. You just let this be as much as you can, with a couple of exceptions, a Hell in a Cell match, and have these two guys go out there one more time and put on a show and really, like I said, beat the piss out of each other. For this Hell in a Cell match to work, with all the intensity and all the crazy shit we've done, the only way this works is both guys have to get blood. Whether that's juicing, whether that's hard way, whether that's combination, I don't know. I don't care. You can't sit there and have these guys do what they did the past four months, and then they both come out looking like baby faces, you know what I mean, at the end of the night. It just won't work. The dynamics of the story indicate this is an example of it doesn't matter how or why these guys have to get some color in this match for it to be believable in any way, shape, or form, and they ultimately will. At one point in time, we will reach about the midway point in the match where all of a sudden, these two guys are starting to act like that they're not going to freaking listen to Kurt Angle. And, you know, they start kind of pushing him around a little bit. And he's warning them. He's warning them that he's the boss in this ring. He's in charge. He's the referee. They're not having it. So ultimately what happens, he tells them to go to freaking separate corners. They don't do it. Angle hits fucking Lesnar with an angle slam. Samoa Joe's sitting there laughing about it, laughing about it. And then Kurt Angle goes after Samoa Joe and eventually puts him in a fucking ankle lock. You know, until Brock Lesnar comes to and he fucking takes out Kurt Angle. And he hits an F5 on Angle. And then ultimately Samoa Joe gets at Lesnar and he fucking sends Lesnar out of the ring. And then he ends up choking out Kurt Angle and submitting him to the point where he passes out. So now... We've got to get people to come out, and they got to open up the door. they got to get Angle the fuck out of there. In comes Triple H as the referee here. Um, ultimately, this match keeps going. Um, just all types of fisticuffs, all types of crazy shit. And ultimately, when all is said and done, you get to this big moment where um, Samoa Joe is trying to choke out Brock Lesnar. And he's getting there, and he's getting there. And he's about to choke him out. But what he doesn't realize is he's too far back and he's so obsessed with choking out Brock Lesnar and either making him tap or making him pass out that he doesn't realize and he's just so caught up in the 
the moment. He doesn't realize his shoulders are on the mat. And ultimately, Triple H counts the one, two, three. And Brock Lesnar ends up the winner, even though he's left laid out in the center of the ring. So Samoa Joe loses, and yet he still wins. Now, Samoa Joe is pissed about this because he's ultimately, he's choked out Brock Lesnar. This shit just doesn't happen. What the hell is he going to do? How the hell did this happen? Why would Triple H, his dude, count? And Triple H is trying to tell him, your shoulders were down. I had to count. I didn't have a choice. You left me no choice. So then Samoa Joe ultimately takes Triple H and fucking chokes him out. And at the end of all of this, you got Brock Lesnar choked out. You got Triple H choked out. And Samoa Joe is standing on, standing, looking over both of them. And that's how we close the damn pay-per-view. So Samoa Joe doesn't go over, but he kind of does. And now you've left the seed of these guys could work again. You would be anxious to do it. You haven't hurt Lesnar too bad, even though, yes, you could say, well, you freaking choked him out. It's one of those things where he still technically won, but you've also created a monster in Samoa Joe, too. There are many different ways I could book the finish to this match. I could sit there and have it be one of those, uh, both guys put their arms over each other, and we count one, two, three, and it's a fucking tie. But to me, there's no type of resolution in any way, shape, or form. I could just have Brock Lesnar win clean, like a monster at the end of all of it. I could have Samoa Joe win clean like a monster at the end of it. But to me, this is kind of like the happy medium where Samoa Joe was so tough and such a badass to where he was able to almost choke out Brock Lesnar and ultimately did. But he was so obsessed with it at the same time that it ended up costing him the match. And there you go. At this point in time, I'd have these guys off, probably past Survivor Series, maybe even going all the way into 2018. Um, but that's what I would do. This is to me, I know it's not maybe the most realistic, but, you know, again, this is fantasy booking, so we can live in a fantasy world. If I was in charge of WWE, to me, this is how WWE should book Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar. Because if they did, this would be one of these all-time epic programs, in my opinion, that we would remember for many years to come. and would make Samoa Joe just look like a million freaking dollars.